Hey guys, John here, and welcome back to the VPS Adventure 2 Master Course. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the content browser. So on the left-hand side is where we're going to find all the install expansions that we currently have. And up here on the left-hand side, we see this grid of squares. Now, if we click this here, we can view our expansions a little bit differently. So we can go one per row if we kind of like scrolling, or we can go all the way down to eight per row if you have a lot of expansions and you want to kind of see them all at once. For me personally, I kind of like this three per row. So let's take a look at this factory two here, and we can start browsing through presets, right? So let's say we want ARP, we're in this ARP category by default because right it starts with A. And we can look down through here and choose the sound that we'd like. There's some atmospheres, bass, bells, chords, and keep in mind this category structure is very important. So in the future, if you're making your own banks, I highly recommend to follow this convention because it makes things a lot easier when you're searching for things and saving things and tagging things. So keep that in the back of your mind. So let's go over here back to the ARP and there's a couple buttons here that I want to talk about. So the first music note here is going to be our audition mode. So we don't necessarily have to load a patch every time to hear it. So we can kind of just scroll through these. So let's kind of take a listen to a couple of these. So this can be very helpful if we're kind of just looking for something and we don't want to load the patch every single time. But if this is something that you don't like and you kind of just want to load each different patch and you don't want to hear it every single time, you can click this off by clicking this music note. So every time now you click them, you won't hear the audition mode. Next up, we have this thing called cat, which is going to be actually for category or alphabetic, depending on how you want to sort through things. And then we have our favorites list, so you can toggle this on and off. So I personally like this acid one here. So if we turn back on our audition mode. So I really like that sound. So let's say I want to add that to my favorites and I can click the star and I have added it now to my favorites so I can search that here in a little bit. To the right, we have our magnifying glass. So this is going to be where we're going to be searching for different things, right? So at the very, very bottom here, we have a button called favorites only. So if we select this here, we have this asset that we picked and this other one that I found before. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. I'm going to save this called ARP Black Belt. So we can toggle this back off here. And now what's really cool as well is the tagging, right? So this basically helps us define or basically helps us search for different sounds a little bit better. So let's say I want to go on the left-hand side here and I say I want something like this, like electro, maybe trance, maybe some plucked sounds, and then maybe maybe something dark and low. And it's gonna start narrowing these things down to a certain amount of patches that we have installed. So we can go here. So it kind of helps us narrow down our search a little bit better because once your, your preset list starts growing and you have a lot of different presets, this is where the tagging stuff really comes into handy and kind of makes things a little bit easier to find because there's going to be a lot that you're going to have on your computer as time goes on. You can also go down here to the text search. If you want to search by something by text, you can just type something in and hit search. And then over here on the artist, you can select all the artists or if there's somebody, somebody specifically that you'd like to make certain patches, you can select them and kind of just browse through their patches as well. And then you can clear all your list if you want to start from scratch and look for something else as well. And what's actually pretty cool is here on the bottom right, we have surprise, which is just going to load something random. That's pretty cool as well. So maybe you can click another surprise. Hit another one, see what else we get here. And this can be a lot of fun too because you can kind of scroll through and find something that you like. Or if you want to learn something that you like, maybe, you know, let's say this patch here. And you want to kind of see how this is made, then you can kind of go through and go through the oscillators, the filters, the modulation section down over here and kind of see how the patch is being made. It's a really cool and fun way to learn stuff. So in our content browser to the right of the content button is a button called info. So if we select this here, right now we're using an init patch. So if we're designing something, let's say we're making a base that's kind of like aggressive or something like that, this is gonna be the tagging section. So let's say we wanna go base and then we want to go aggressive and then maybe fill out these other tags that would apply to the sound that you're making. And then you can type in the comments, maybe use this patch in a certain way or use this however you want to use or maybe some information about it or maybe what the macros do. Who, who knows what you wanna write, but that's some information that you can add into that patch. And also your artist name, 
or your name or whatever you want to pick. And that's going to be an easy way to kind of sort by your patches or something like that. So it's very useful, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, is to use these tags because as your patch list grows, the more expansions that you get, it's going to be easier to find the exact sound that you're working on because time is money at the end of the day. And I know we get into that spot where we're kind of just cycling through presets, through presets to find the right sound that we need. So using this tagging system is really going to speed up your time in finding the right sound that you want. To the right of the info tab, we have a built-in file browser. So this is going to show us all the drives that are currently connected to your computer. And here's where you can import WAV files that you have. You can left click and drag those WAV files onto the oscillator, to the drums, or to the wavetable view and import those files. You can also right click these files and convert them into shapes, granular, or resample files. And then you can choose where you want them to be saved to. So for the shape conversion, make sure that the file is one waveform's length before the conversion. There's a lot more information in the manual, so I highly recommend for you to check that out if that's something that you're interested in. So if you want to create your own bank of presets, it's actually very easy to do so. Simply navigate to the top level of the content browser and select Create New Customer Expansion by right-clicking here. So this is going to make a bank with automatic folders for the type of presets like the other expansions. If there's any information that you want to add to the bank, all you need to do is edit the info file that's created in the directory of where you saved your bank to. If you're unsure of where that is, navigate to the system tab where we loaded the init preset and you'll see your expansions here. So if we click this here, we can type it in whatever that we'd like to and it's gonna make all of those folders for us. You can also add a custom picture by adding a picture of the same size named main and this picture will be located in the same directory of your bank underneath the images folder. When you right click an expansion, you have a few different options. You can rename your expansion, you can verify your expansion, which makes sure all your user content is in the right folders and you can finally publish your expansion. All right, guys, so that was the content browser in a nutshell. It's not too complicated at all. It's actually set up pretty straightforward. I would recommend to spend some time in there and kind of just get used to it and maybe make your own bank, add a picture to it and see if that all works and get that all set up so you can start making your own safe presets in your own certain bank and kind of get used to the workflow of naming your patches and putting them in the right folders and so on and so forth. So in the next video, we're going to be talking about the oscillator section, starting with our basic shapes, right? Our saws, triangles, so on and so forth, our VA oscillator, and then moving through the different oscillator generators that eventually two has to offer. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.